Since 2003, Nancy Hughes, a polio survivor, has been improving the lives, growing local economies, and ensuring the safety of countless people in Central America and Mexico. The organization she founded, Stove Team International, grew out of an international service project that she started in a Rotary Club. For her work, Nancy has received the, received the prestigious International Purpose Prize, as well as being designated a CNN hero, and Stove Team was recently awarded the Environmental Protection Agency's Special Achievement Award in developing local markets. In Rotary, she's been honored with the Service Above Self Award and recognized as a White House Rotarian Champion of Change. Her work has been featured in the Rotarian Magazine and on Rotary's website, as well as Forbes, and she's also been featured in a book by Marlo Thomas. Since its inception, Stove Team has established sustainable stove factories in El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico that have produced more than 50,000 stoves. They're safe, they're fuel efficient, and they improve the lives of almost 400,000 people. Nancy's been a mentor and a role model and an inspiration to me for an awful long time. You see, she's also my sister. Please give it up for Nancy Hughes. Fifteen years ago, my husband, who was a family practice doctor, died of breast cancer. I didn't know what to do with my life. I had three kids. But they did what kids do, you know, they left and moved to other states. So I was kind of looking around for something to do, so I volunteered with a medical team in Guatemala. And, you know, I didn't have any special skills, so they said, what can you do? Well, I was a mother, a grandmother. I said, well, I can cook. And they said, okay you're cooking for the medical team, which was 120 doctors and nurses. And we were out in the bush. We didn't have running water. We didn't have adequate shelter. We were on a former military base. That military base was the scene of terror for most of the people in Guatemala because we were there right after the Civil War. So in order to get people to come to where our medical team was working, we had to hire a guy with a microphone to go run around on a motorcycle and advertise that there was free medical care. So that was my first experience there. And when you're with a medical team, you get to wander around and see what's going on. And I was horrified by what I saw. I saw burned children. I saw babies die because they couldn't intubate them. They couldn't put tubes down their throats because their throats were so choked with creosote. They died right there in our medical team. And to give you another idea, we were up in a place called Playa Grande, which for those of you who know Spanish, which many of you do, there was no playa and it wasn't grande. So we were up there and one young boy had walked across the mountains for four days with a wooden chair strapped on his back with his sister in it. And when they arrived, she was diagnosed with a ruptured appendix. That's the lack of medical care that I saw down there. And that's what still exists in Guatemala today. So I continue, I was exhausted and inspired by what, by what I had seen and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, this is really horrible, and I can come down here for 10 days at a time and help. So I signed up again, and I went for three years to various locations in Guatemala with Cascade Medical Team. I was not a Rotarian, I didn't know very much about Rotary, but then on the third year that I went with the medical team, a young woman came into the kitchen where I was working and she said could you please delay dinner because I fell in an open fire at the age of two and my hands have been burned shut for 16 years and you all restored my hands 
it was so powerful for me. And I thought, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I mean, people shouldn't be falling into fires and they shouldn't be having to cook over open campfires in their homes. Well, I'd heard of, you know, fuel efficient cook stoves and I thought, okay, maybe I can help with this and prevent this problem. So what I did was I went home and, you know, my husband's Rotary Club had asked me to join, and I thought, you know, that's for old guys who play golf. That's not me. <laughs> but anyway, the convincing argument was, you know, if you join, you can quit if you don't like it, and they'll quit bugging you. So, okay, so I joined the Rotary Club, and I started talking about what I'd seen, and I kept saying, we need to do something about this. This is awful. And so, you know, I, I just learned a little bit more about what was going on and I thought, okay, I can bring some, I'd heard of fuel efficient stoves and I knew the medical team was having problems, you know, getting some of the doctors to come because they wanted to bring their spouses and there was a woman anesthesiologist that they really wanted to have come. She was from the coast in Oregon and her husband didn't want to work in the kitchen. And I thought, okay, we can start the stove team to go with the medical team. And that way, we can put in fuel-efficient cook stoves with all the extraneous people. So, okay, that first year, I recruited a bunch of those people and had a couple of my friends, and I think 10 or 12 of us went to Guatemala for our 10-day trip. And I thought we were doing great stuff. We put in 120 cook stoves. They were big, heavy cook stoves. They had three pieces that each weighed about 100 pounds. And we hiked over the mountains of Guatemala. For those of you who don't know, Guatemala has 24 languages and 24 volcanoes. So we were on the sides of the volcanoes in the highlands and we were putting in these cook stoves. And I thought, 120 stoves, that's really cool. We are really cool. And then I found out what the need was. In Guatemala alone, the need was for six million cook stoves. For those of you who don't know, most of the world cooks over open campfires inside their homes. And I also learned at that point, smoke from indoor cooking fires is the leading cause of death of children under five in the world. It kills eight times as many individuals as malaria. That's just in addition to the pterygium that, cause, that is caused you know, the, the eye disease and the skin diseases that are caused by smoke from open cooking fires. So anyway, I'd been running around, you know, talking to rotary clubs and groups like you guys, and I was like, okay, this is a big problem and we need to do something about it. And, you know, I raised a little bit of money and I thought, you know, well, you know, maybe we can do something about this. And people had donated a bit and people had come to volunteer. Then I decided, you know something? We're putting in 120 stoves a year, and that's just not adequate. And the stoves were heavy, and they didn't fit in everybody's houses. And so I got really discouraged. And I just decided to sort of take a breather. I'm not allowed to say that I quit, but anyway, I took a breather. And what happened, was the leading designer of what we call rocket elbow cook stoves happened to live a half an hour from my home in Philomath, Oregon. Now you guys know the kind of guy. He's about this big around, his shirt doesn't quite button, he's got like six cars in parts all over his front lawn. That's Larry Winiarski, he's world famous. Anyway, he's the designer of the Rocket Elbow cook stoves, and he came to my house with his friend Ken Goyer, and they knocked on my door, and they said, you're not, ab you're, you're not able to quit this. It's really important from the world. And I said, you know, I'm over 65. I can do what I want. He said, no, absolutely not. So, okay. So, so they came, and, and Ken gave me this little book you've all seen. It said, don't sweat the small stuff. So I said you know, but I don't like the stoves that I'm putting in and I don't think they're adequate. And Larry said, well, what do you want? And I said, I want a portable stove so it doesn't have to be installed. 
I want it to be made in Latin America. I want all the parts to come from Latin America. I don't want anything to be imported from somewhere else. I want to supply jobs down in the developing world. That's why they're poor. And I want it fuel efficient. I want to reduce the amount of fuel, and I want it safe. I don't want any burn kids. I don't do burn kids. And Larry said, OK, I'm going to a stove conference in Nicaragua, and I'll de design a stove for you. And I thought, right, a stove conference? I didn't think there were such things. <laughs> Anyway, off he went, and I thought, okay, so I bought golf clubs. Anyway, I thought I was going to learn to play golf. Well, guess what? Didn't happen. So I got a call about a month later. Hi, this is Larry. I'm calling you from El Salvador. Oh, hi, Larry. Hmm. You know, he said, uh, I've designed a cook stove for you, and I've got a guy here who wants to produce some. You just have to show up and see what's going on. And I was like, you know, I, I'm not doing that anymore. And he said, you just have to pay him $500 a month and get down here. And I was like, Larry, I'm not doing that. And so, you know, I thought, well, whatever. And R Larry said, just give it the weekend. I'll call you back. Well, I don't know if you believe in faith or karma or angels or whatever. Monday morning, in my mailbox, $10,000 from Carlos Santana, the guitarist for Stoves for the Developing World. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. He still supports us. Anyway, so I was, I was kind of not able to give up at that point, so I, so I went to my Rotary Club. I mean, I was the reluctant Rotarian, and I went to my Rotary Club, and I said, okay, uh, I'm going to El Salvador, and I'm going to meet a guy who wants to make stoves, and I have no idea what we're going to do. Does anyone want to come? And it was Rotary, so four people signed up. <laughs> it was amazing. So we went to El Salvador, and there we were met by Gustavo with his Excel spreadsheet of our appointments for the week, starting with the Vice Minister of the Environment, and I had never seen the stove. But there we went. We took off in this ratty car, went to the ministry environment, showed our passports, you know, felt very official, and got up there. And Larry stood up there, and he started explaining how the stove worked. And he dragged the stove out of the back of the car, and he said, well, it's built on the principle of what we call the rocket elbow. So the rocket elbow is the orange part that you see. That's the combustion chamber for the stove. So the way it's designed is, it's designed with what we call a portaleña. Now, those of you who know Spanish, it means the wood holder upper. So you put five sticks the size of my fingers, branches, not cutting down trees, branches, five sticks. And you put them in here, but you can see where my fingers are way at the back that the fire is going to be way back in the middle, away so that it doesn't burn any children. What the deal is that the rocket elbow is this wood goes up here, and cold air is brought in underneath. So when you combine the cold air and the hot air, you get complete combustion. And the heat comes out here at 1,000 degrees, and there's no smoke. It was pretty amazing. And the uh, Minister of the Environment said, well, it looks like a toilet, but we'll see if people will accept it. <laughs> you know, well, for me, it was like, wow, it works. You know, oh my goodness. So he said, well, we have about five and a half million dollars for a project like yours. What's your capacity? Our capacity was two stoves at that point. So we go back to our cheesy hotel where we're staying. I mean, you probably have all stayed in those, you know, developing world hotels. Anyway, we were in, this, in the parking lot of this hotel, and my Rotarian friends are around me, and they're saying, you can do it, Nancy. You can own a factory in El Salvador. And I'm like, like hell. I mean, I am not owning a factory in El Salvador. Go away. And one guy who I still work with, Jerry Riker, said, listen, we got a great product, we got an enormous amount of need, and we have Rotary. We can raise money through Rotary, and what we can do is we can place an order for stoves with Gustavo. 
That'll give him startup money to be able to hire some people and to, um, pro, uh, to basically set up a factory to produce and sell to cook stoves. And I was like, great, we don't have to do it. You know, I mean, we're all old. We didn't want to own factories in El Salvador. So this worked for me. So, okay, so I go back to my Rotary Club and I say, well, this is what we're going to do. And by gum, you know, because the district matched our money. I mean, Dick Briggs, our grants chair in our club, said, um, well, you need to write a grant. And I was like, um, <clears throat> I've never written a grant. And it's like, don't worry, I'll help you. I said, okay. He says, how much money do you think you can raise? I have no idea. He said, well, it's just, what if you don't raise everything that we propose? He said, well, they just give you what you raise. I was like, okay, that works for me. Let's just go for the max. So we did. So we went for $56,000. For those of you who've been in Rotary long enough, you remember that was the maximum for a major matching grant without having to jump through hoops and think, do things I didn't want to do. So anyway, so we wrote this grant, and you know we raised what ten, twelve thousand dollars, and boom, it got was enough to put in a factory. So we started that factory in El Salvador. The next thing I knew, somebody from my medical team says, "Oh, well, Marco Tulio in Guatemala, he wants to start a factory too." Okay, why not? You know, so so all right. So I called my brother and I said does your club want to help start a factory in Guatemala? And he said, sure. So Irvine Spectrum Rotary Club collaborated with the club in Guatemala. We started a factory in Guatemala, and we brought um, Gustavo up from El Salvador to help Marco start a factory. And then I was just meandering through Central America, which is one of those things I do. And one of the kids, one of the interns that I was with, said, I want to go to Honduras. I've never been to Honduras, and I want to get a flag. And I was like, I'm really tired. I just want to get a smoothie. And, and, and so the guy says, OK, OK. So we stop in this, we stop in this you know, cheesy little tourist shop so Ian can get a flag. And he's got a shirt on that says Dove Team International. And so the guy from the tourist shop says, oh, what's that? And Ian's like explaining the stove. And I'm like, do I get a smoothie? And so the fellow from the shop said, just go over there and sit down. And you know, you can get a, get a smoothie over there. So I sit down. Hi, I'm Raina from the Rotary Club of Copan Ruinas, Honduras. We'd like to start a factory. So I mean. <laughs> It was not my fault, you know? <laughs> they just wanted to do it and I just showed up, you know? So anyway, so we started one in Honduras and then, you know, all the Rotary clubs stepped up to help us. We ended up producing all this massive number of stoves and I'm as stunned as anybody else. And then I start getting awards and stuff and it's like, that's not me, I just showed up. You know, I just wanted to help this one kid who had her hands burned. But, you know, that's what happens. So thank you, Rotary, and thank you for the passion and the help. I appreciate it.